Hey guys, this is Mike from Mike Stickers. In this video, I'm going to show you all how to make professional die cut stickers at home using the sort of equipment like I have. It's not entry level equipment, but I'm going to show you how to do it the way I do it. So stickers like this, uh, die cut, high quality, laminated, they're waterproof, fade resistant, dishwasher safe. They're the best you could possibly make and I'm doing it right here at home. So stay tuned and watch the full video to see how I do it. So the first thing you got to do is open up Corel Draw, open up a new, um, you know, I have presets for the size of sheets that I use. So I just open that up to get started. Then I want to open up the file that was sent to me by the customer, which I've already saved to a folder. Just got to remember what the name was. Uh, this one right here. All right, then you just want to open that up. All right, just paste it to the page. And you have to um, always import it in. And then you want to make sure that the image is the size that you need it to be. Go ahead and set it to that size. So it's actually a little bit larger than I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna drag and drop a box over the top of it. Okay, so that's the exact size now, but what I'm gonna do is change it to the size that I want it to be. I want it to be exactly three and a half by two. I need to unlock it so that I can make it exactly what I want. So I'm going to intersect these. What I'm going to do there is I intersected it. So it's going to cut it down to the size that I want it to be. I'm going to get rid of the old one. And then now this box, I'm going to make this into my cut line. I'm going to right click to turn it the blue that I need to turn it in my cut line I'm gonna put it as hairline and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy that and that's how I'm gonna make my my print bleed so I'm gonna make a copy of this one and then paste it I'm gonna change that to black And then I'm going to change the thickness of it. Now I'm going to merge this or group it together with the actual image. And then that's going to create a print bleed. I want to make sure it's underneath the layer. I want to move it to the back of the page. So you click on order and go to the back of the page. Now you can click on this shift, click on the image. You can hit center and equal, and it's going to uh, put it together, and then you can group it so that it stays together. Now you want to put the cut line, make sure it's on top of the page, and then you want to center and equal it, get it where you want it. Now you've got your cut line. I like to group those together so nothing happens to it. That's going to be good enough for my print bleed. It's going to be exactly how I need it. Now the next step is go ahead and set up the page so that you can have it uh, do the layout. So you want to set up your registration marks. I have mine preset to a certain way that I like them. My margin is 0 0.25 and it creates the distance from the edge of the page that I like. And I know the size of page that I like to print on and cut, so I just always use that same size sheet and then I fill however many stickers I can onto it. So you want to pull the, the first one down to the bottom edge of the page, leave enough room from the 
uh, from the edge so that you can read the registration marks not be too close I'm just double checking my cut line making sure that I have it correct I'm not sure why it shows that size there but I know that it's how I want it so what you want to do is you want to duplicate these if you do control shift and D it'll pop up this duplicate box I just always keep it on the side right there and you want to create the spacing that you want and then how many copies of it that you want and it's an easy way to duplicate it across Give it a little bit more spacing there. Oops, you know, this is going to work out better. If I rotate it, it's going to give me more space on the page to work with. I can fit at least one more in there. Now I want to space them out a little bit more. I don't want to. I don't want them to be closer than they have to be because you want some support in between for when it's cutting. Now I'm going to group all these together. I'm going to copy it and center it over a little bit first. Right, now I'm going to copy that. <clears throat> And I'm just going to create a row above it. I'm going to shift all, or shift A, or sorry, control, control A to copy all those, or to uh, select them all, then copy it and paste it again. It's just a quick way to get a full page. I need to fill up a little bit more here. Okay, so that'll fill up my page. And then you can click on, click, uh, shift, and then click on all the other ones. And then group them together, hit P to center it in the page. And then you're going to go ahead and save that. Let's save a copy of it with the Corel Draw uh, file extension. And then you're going to want to publish or yeah, publish to PDF. And this is the one you're going to send over to VersaWorks. When it comes to cutting, you can cut from either one of the files. I like to use the PDF whenever I'm cutting as well. I like to print and cut from the same one. So then you're going to open up VersaWorks. I'm not going to update this right now. I'm going to import it. Now I, I have presets for my settings that I like to use when I'm using the Roland printer with the graph tech. So I already have that set up. But I'll go in and show you some of the settings that I use. I'm only worried about a few things when I go in there. I go in there and make sure that the page is the right size and then I center it on the page and then I have it on the correct type of uh, vinyl I'm using. And I do high speed and then I have print only. 
I go ahead and rip that. It takes a while to go ahead and get all that fully ripped. Now this ripped, you can go ahead and print it. I used to always save a copy, but you don't really need to, as long as you have your other one. So you print it, and it takes a while sometimes for the printer to, I think it has a heater inside that needs to warm up before it's gonna start printing. So sometimes it takes a while. You can see your ink levels over there. Um, It'll continue to print for quite a long time, even though it's showing that it's low. So at this point, you just gotta let it print, and then uh, you move on to the next step. Okay, so now you have it printing. This takes a really long time to print, honestly. Um, it tells you the times when you click on the different, the different, um, quality levels. I think these sheets are typically around 15 minutes per each sheet. If you do it on the higher quality, it's about 30, 35 minutes per sheet. So, um, and then sped it up for us there. I kind of skipped ahead. And then you're gonna want to cut it off, but you wanna feed out enough so that you don't cut into the crop marks. So you wanna make sure to pull out plenty of length if you're printing it on the Roland or cutting it on the Roland, you need to pull out like at least four more additional inches past the crop marks, but not on the graph tech. And then you got to hang them up and you got to let them off gas overnight. So I hang them up. I used to lay them down, but they would get a lot of dust and dirt and stuff on them from just laying there. And when you put the laminate on there, it shows. So I start, I started to hang them up and this works a lot better. It gets a lot less stuff on them. And then the next step is to go ahead and laminate them. I always cut, I always, um, I pull them off the, pull it off the roll to the length that I need. Use a tape measure to measure if it's, if it's past 12 inches, there's a 12 inch mark on the cutter. Then I cut the length, turn it sideways and I cut usually an inch to two inches off the side. That way when you're laminating, you don't accidentally go off the edge of the sheet and also with the rolling printer, there's always a two inch margin, you know, one inch on each side. So I always cut off a part, a, an edge of the laminate, peel it off so that I can then just lay the sheet completely flat on top of the printed sheet of stickers. I find that this, it introduces zero bubbles into the lamination. So I used to peel it back and fold it and then pull it, but when I did it that way, it would introduce a lot of air bubbles into it. So for me, this is the most efficient, you know, most effective way to do it. So I lay it down as good as possible, make sure I push all the air out, and then I roll it through the laminator. You only wanna use as much pressure as you have to until you feel a little bit of tension on the page. If you put too much tension, it's gonna mess it up. If you put no tension, it's gonna get a bunch of air bubbles. So, <clears throat> this is what it looks like. There's no air bubbles on any of these. There's a few very, very, very small little, they're kind of like air bubbles, but they'll come out. And then, so the next step is to go ahead and cut it. So. You wanna go ahead and do the launch and go to the um, Cut Master 4, I think it is. But it's Cut and Plot is the button there that you press. And sometimes it takes a little while to open up the this next program. So from there, you just wanna check a few things. You wanna make sure the size of the page is the same as the settings there. You wanna center it up in the page is the way that I always do it. 
and then you want to check and make sure that you're only cutting the cut lines you want to because it'll recognize all the different lines and you can uncheck or check the ones you want you do the condition that you want based upon what settings you're using I do condition 3 because that's just my perf settings that's how I have it set up you want to make sure the crop mark setting is turned on and then you can send it to the cutter at this point you have to have already set it up in there um, I kind of jumped ahead there by pressing send on the computer. Um, that's just when I was filming all this. I, I did that step first, or I put that video in first. But this is actually what you do before you press send over there. So this is actually the step you do first, um, just before that very last step of pressing send. You want to get it lined up, get it lined up with the marks that are on the, it can be anywhere left or right in the, on the machine as long as it lines up with the blue pinch mark or a, a pinch roller guides at the top of the machine. On this one I just press number three which is sheet to sheet the page it basically checks to see the whole length of the sheet. If you're on a roll you don't want to do that setting you want to do just number one. And then here I'm setting it up to where the blade is in the middle of the crop mark basically. The crop mark makes the 90 degree angle you want to put it just inside of that 90 degrees on both sides. Now you can see when it reads it perfectly, it goes over each one the exact same way. It doesn't redo it or do it two or three times. It does it perfectly the first time. This machine works really, really well. I don't have very many issues with it at all. So here it is cutting all the stickers. Every now and then it gets off on just a few when you're doing a whole entire sheet, but I think it's honestly when I don't spend as much time trying to line it up. If you line it up square on the machine, it seems to do just fine. So it seems like the vinyl moves a lot on the page, but it actually cuts really, really well. So now you can go ahead and take it off the machine and then lay it on your table. The next step is go ahead and pop all the stickers out. So this can be a little bit tedious and depending on the, the cut lines and how they're shaped you have to really be careful on some to make sure that you don't tear them in the process of doing this. When they're big rectangles or squares like this it's really easy. I like to push them, push down on them and pull up on the sheet of vinyl to kind of get them to pull out on one side and then I repeat the process from the other side until they fully pop out. Um, more delicate designs sometimes I'll just pull out each one individually by hand by just lifting it out because you have to be a little bit more careful with some of them. So as you see I did switch to a different sheet when we're cutting from when we're printing but that's because you have to let these off gas overnight or not necessarily overnight but at least for eight hours and so I just went ahead and cut a different sticker sheet that I already had made up that had already been sitting for long enough so you want to go ahead and get them all in a stack and I you know I like to always put them facing the same way there's just no way I can conceive of not doing it like that so I get them all stacked in the, in the in a stack together, all facing the same direction. Okay. <clears throat> Now the next step is going to go ahead and be to, I, I count them and do quality control at the same time. So I count to make sure I have is all the ones that I need and then at the same time I'm checking for any sort of defects, checking for any sort of air bubbles, any sort of dirt or hair or anything that got underneath the laminate. These came out pretty clean and there really wasn't anything I had to nit really nitpick to find anything wrong with any of them. I just 
just toss any that I don't want to use to the side. And then the next step past, you know, that is to just go ahead and package them up. I mean, at that point they're done, but then my final step is go ahead and package them up. So I'm now um, shrink wrapping them. So I pull the size of the material to uh, what I need for whatever size the sticker is. I seal one end of the bag and then I put the stickers on the other side. I try to keep them in as nice of a stack as I can. The bag is going to be longer is going to be larger than what I actually need, but I'm going to seal it on multiple sides so that I can basically create the size of a bag that I need. Now I'm going to trim off all the excess. I'm doing this pack just for a sample. I mean, usually when I'm making the stickers, it's usually hundreds at a time, so the packaging method works a little better. And then the final step for the packaging is to go ahead and shrink it down. I use a hot air gun. I bought a big heat gun and it didn't work as good as this little small one that I have. I'm just careful to not overheat it up and get it just right. And it seals it up real nice, looks real professional. And that's really it. So those are the basic steps to make a sticker the way that I do it. Not all the machines are the same, so it's going to vary a little bit from machine to machine. But, you know, if y'all have any questions or anything, feel free to email me at mikestickershatx at gmail.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions that y'all have, the best that I know. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Please hit the notification bell if you can. It helps out. I'm trying to really keep this channel going so that I can provide y'all as much information as possible. As I learn more, as I grow within my business, I'm going to share more here with y'all, okay? So I'm going to share as much information as I can. So please continue to follow. Thanks.